Mm-hmm. Oh. Sexy date. We don't need any of that. And again, if I haven't iterated it enough, these kind of nuances strip salads just won't do. Hey man, your mixes don't suck because you haven't watched enough compression and EQ tutorials. Your mixes suck because you haven't watched enough tutorials on editing. Let me show you something. What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Wavy Wayne, your pro audio plug from wavyproaudio.com. Hit up wavyproaudio.com for all of your pro audio needs. I'm talking about microphones, interfaces, all that. This video, I'm going to break down some simple editing tasks. Matter of fact, just three simple editing tasks that every engineer, every mixer should be doing on every single track before you mix. Now, here's why it's important to make sure that you do this editing. For one, all of the artifacts like background noise, breaths, clicks, and pops, maybe the artist bumping the microphone, all of that noise is gonna become very apparent once you start adding processors. Once you start compressing and um, EQing to accentuate certain frequencies that you wanna hear, once you start adding a limiter to your master and doing your mix bus compression, you know you're gonna be ultimately bringing up that noise floor and introducing even more artifacts that you probably didn't even know was there. It's also important that you actually start to edit these tracks before you start the mixing process because editing will actually help you to learn the nuances of the song learn the nuances of the recording especially if you aren't the one who did the recording it's going to be super important for you during that editing process to investigate the tracks that you're working on so that you can later as you're mixing make the best possible mixing decisions now there are three editing tasks that i want to go over with y'all today it's going to include cutting cutting out stuff like breaths uh clicks pops and any other noise, background noise, room noises, dead space, air, we don't want any of that because it's all gonna be noise in the end, right? After we get done cutting, we're gonna wanna practice fades. I'm gonna show you in this video some shortcuts and tools that I use to do fades really quickly. And lastly, timing. We wanna make sure that everything in our session is properly time aligned for the best possible results. Let's jump into this session by Lydia Caesar. This is an unreleased track that y'all getting an exclusive on. So let's go ahead and jump into it. And I'm gonna show you some of my favorite editing techniques. So the first thing that I wanna do while I'm in this session is really start to investigate, look around, and see what I'm doing. If you haven't already organized the session, that's another thing that you probably want to do before you jump into the editing phase. And matter of fact, I'll leave a PDF guide, a link to it in the description of this video where you can get my full breakdown on how I train my assistants step by step on how to organize and edit each session that they work on for me. It's going to be a life and time saver for all y'all out there. Make sure you click the link in the description to download that free PDF if you haven't already. All right. So now I'm just going to go around in this session and I'm organizing some stuff, getting to know what's on these tracks. Uh, let me actually hide my clip gain line for now. I don't want to see that. That way I can more finely see what's going on. So, so far it looks like, hey, the first track is going to be my beat. I can even rename this to beat. We got a lead vocal here. It looks like this is going to be another separate lead vocal where we're filling in some of the spots in there. Um, and I'm gonna give y'all a bonus on here too, because I can already see that there are a couple of issues that are gonna need to be addressed, all right? Um, the first thing that we wanna do is start to cut. Cut out all of the dead air on each individual track. Now, you probably have heard about strip silence, and I know somebody gonna say, yo, Wavy, why you just didn't use strip silence? Well, I'll tell you why I wouldn't use strip silence on this case, because strip silence, a lot of times, does not account for the little nuances. Let you be the engineer. I want to be in control over what gets cut out and what gets kept in the recording. So I'm not gonna use strip with silence on vocals. For some instruments, mental stuff like drums and other items like that i'll probably choose to use strip silence but where it's very nuanced and not a constant pattern i don't want to rely on strip silence to make those edits for me a lot of times when i have done that in the past it just simply resulted in me having to come back and make edits anyway again doing this process manually is going to allow me the opportunity to get to know these tracks to listen to what's on each track individually and make my own best decision so one of the first things that i want to do in this session is i actually want to zoom in the waveforms up here at the top left 
of the toolbar in Pro Tools, you have your uh, zoom controls. Some of y'all might not have your zoom control showing, but if you just right click anywhere in the toolbar, you can choose to show and hide those zoom controls or adversely go over to the far right side of your edit window toolbar. And there's a little toolbar drop down menu where you can choose to show and hide the zoom controls there too. I always like to keep my zoom control showing because I want to zoom in those waveforms. So I'm just going to use this waveform zoom and blow this up. That way I can really see what's on these tracks. Now, a lot of this stuff is, is pretty clean. Um, so we don't have to worry. I can tell that this thing has been consolidated. But as I zoom in, we can see like, hey, there's little noises there. What I'm going to do is solo the one track that I'm working on. And I'm going to work on a track by track basis as I'm editing up this lead vocal. So let's just start off by... It's the right so the first thing right there that big breath it's the kind. we don't need that breath so the first thing i want to do is probably go ahead and get rid of that here's a method that you could do you could just make i'm gonna show you a few different methods here but ultimately i want you to become an editing ninja so rely on the shortcuts all right you could just make a selection let's jump in slip mode real quick you could just make a selection and start to edit that cut that off right there like that but it's a lot faster if I just drop my insertion point, hit the letter A on my keyboard to trim from the start of the clip up to the insertion point. Very easy. Now, also, that works at the end of a clip, too. I'm going to zoom out here. If I drop my insertion point at the end of a clip, I can hit the letter S on my keyboard to trim from the end of the clip to my insertion point. The insertion point, again, is just wherever you click with the selector tool in Pro Tools. In order for those one key shortcuts to work, however, you need to make sure that you have the command keyboard focus turned on. Edit keyboard focus, which is this little AZ button right here in the top right hand corner of your edit window. If you don't have that lit yellow there, then your one key shortcuts will not be active. All right. So we're, we're going to just zoom that out a little bit. So I'm going to just listen to this and I can listen to it in the, with the music as well to make sure that I'm making musical edits. It's the kinds of love I've been longing for. All right. So in this case, again, I don't want that next breath. I'm just going to make a selection of it. And in this case, we're just going to hit delete. Now, as you're going through, you want to add fades to every clip. Every single clip should have a fade at the top and tail to ensure a smooth transition. Let me show you a little trick, though, that you Pro Tools Ultimate users may have. Only Pro Tools Ultimate will have this. And if you don't have Pro Tools Ultimate, I wouldn't advise that you go get it just for this little trick. I still advise that you do manual fades. But if you have Pro Tools Ultimate, check this out. You just go to Setup. Go to preferences and then in your operations tab there's this miscellaneous section and in the miscellaneous section you can have a clip auto fade in and out length and this will automatically put a up to a 10 millisecond fade on every single clip automatically but you won't see it it's just automatically happening in the background we're gonna keep that to zero because i want to manually fade and control this and most of us are not going to be using pro tools ultimate so it's not going to apply to a lot of y'all but i did just want to show y'all that that is there all right so what i want to do now is add a fade a few different ways to add a fade one of them if you're using the smart tool which is the tool that combines the trim the selector and the grabber tool just by clicking the bar above it you could come right up to the top corner and then click and drag that fade into the clip. You want to fade slightly into the start of that first word just to ensure that it's a smooth transition on that clip. It's the kinds of love. Let's delete that fade just by clicking it with the grabber tool and hitting delete. Another way that we can actually add fades is by using one key modifiers again. Yeah, we're going to be editing ninjas. So looking down at the keyboard, we got the letter F. F is for fade. If I make a selection across a certain part of my clip here, and again, I just want to, it doesn't matter how far outside the clip you start. Let me just trim that up a little closer. Um, I, it doesn't matter how far out you start. 
is a, it all depends how long the fade is going to be from when the clip starts up into wherever you go into that clip. So I just want to get faded just into the start of that waveform a little bit. If you hit the letter F, that'll automatically just apply a fade. And you can use the preferences in the setup menu to uh, determine what those preset fades will be whenever you use that kind of shortcut. Alternatively, if I just drop my insertion point, I could go to the key right before F, which is D, and then add a fade this way. And this is going to be fading from the start of the clip to the insertion. Similar to hitting the letter A if, and cutting or trimming from the start of the key to the insertion, clip to the insertion. And then if I'm at the end of a clip and I want to add a fade, I can do something similar just by going to the end of that clip. And then instead of hitting the D, I'm going to skip over the F and hit the G. And that'll uh, add a fade from the end of the clip up to my insertion point. So we got that first clip edited. Let's hear that. It's the kinds of love I've been longing for. Good. Sinship. So I'm going to keep going and move right along here. I'm just going to use my smart tool at this time to add my fade because sometimes that's just a faster way to do it. Send shivers down my spine. Make All right. And then we have a... Uh, a breath here makes me want now me personally for every type of song i don't think that you need to remove every single breath but for this particular song and this breath that we are coming up on let's listen to it in context with the music and see if it is necessary for the feeling and the emotion that we are trying to convey down my spine makes me wonder why right so i think it should kind of stay there to help carry that natural feeling over so what i'm going to do is using the clip gain line and if your clip gain line isn't showing you could go up to the view menu choose clip and then clip gain line you can show it that way or you could just um, hold the shift and control button and hit the minus key on your keyboard to show and hide your clip gain line. This is going to make it very easy with the smart tool activated, of course, um, to just come hover right above that clip gain line and just trim that level on down. Now, the reason being that because if we remember like looking at it, this level of this breath is almost as loud as the, the end of this word. That could be problematic when I start to compress and bring stuff up in the vocal. Then this is going to get even louder. So let's just bring that down a little bit. Still got the natural feeling, but it's a lot more subtle. Makes me wonder why it took so long. All right. And then so we're going to go ahead and cut some stuff here. And I heard a little, a little crunching, but I think that's in the music. It is nothing we can do about that. So we're going to just go ahead and clean this out. What is this, though? To get, to get. We don't need that big breath right before that phrase. So let's go ahead and cut that out just by making a selection. And we'll trim. So long to get and always want to put a fade at the top and tail of every single clip, no matter what method you use. To get here. You can add that fade. Now, also, I want to. To get. That t, that t, I want to. To get. To get. I want to actually accentuate this little section a little bit. So I'm just going to select that and bump it up with the clip gain a little bit. To get here. Just to make sure that that part gets hurt. To get here. All right. Now, something that you might notice in some singers is that they will have that extra breath at the end of a of a of word. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I want to kind of clean that up. So for Lydia, she does that a lot. So I'm already knowing how to deal with that. I'm just going to separate that clip at that point, or you could even just you know delete that section and what i want to do is start to trim up pretty closely to the end of that word uh, here and fade into that last little breath now using my smart tool i can bring my cursor down to the bottom half of this fade and you see how it turns into a little little fade tool there and then i'm just going to change that slope of that fade to really cut that last part of the uh breath out yeah 
There we go. Yeah. So I didn't eliminate it completely to make it sound unnatural, just cleaning it up. And then again, I'm going to be testing my edits in context with the music. To get here. Mm. Right? And then keeping on going. Trim. Fade. Mm, oh. Sexy date. We don't need any of that. And again, if I haven't iterated it enough, these kind of nuances strip silence just won't do so if you're trying to be lazy and just say you know what i could just use strip silence and get rid of anything that's uh that's like that or use a gate or something it just won't have the same feeling as your personal decision making no. sexy dates All right and here's another instance where we have a little noise in there and a little right that uh, we don't need that at the end of dates so i'm gonna just trim that up, fade it, adjust the slope of that fade for that. Sexy dates. Right, and I want to probably just uh, soften that up a little bit. So I'm going to use the trim tool to bring that out a little bit more. It's, it's sexy dates in fancy places. Hmm. Let's hear what it will sound like without this next breath. In fancy places. dates in fancy places oh. all right uh, i think i can live without that honestly so we're going to keep that out and just add a little fade dates in fancy places oh. right. and again the beauty of editing this myself and getting personal with each individual track is that now i can hear stuff fancy place like a plosive place 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 Right, and let's place it, place it. Right, and we can even see how that air has affected it. So maybe I want to select that and use clip gain to minimize that. To place it, to place it. Right, so that can automatically get rid of some of that plosive. To place it, oh, to place it. Versus trying to EQ and compress and do all these tricks manual sometimes literally works the best right i could even take this a step further and using the new track features uh track markers feature in pro tools add a track marker right here just to let somebody know so maybe if i'm collaborating and somebody else is going to be doing the final mix and, and i'm just doing the editing i can say you know what i edited out a plosive here just hit the little plus sign on that track and we're going to call it edit uh i'm gonna change that marker to red we're gonna name it plosive Hit OK. And you can see I have my plosive marker right there with the comment uh, shown. But that got drastically cleaned up. And when I put a little high pass filter on this, that's really going to be gone. In fancy places, oh, picnics in the park. Okay. In fancy places, oh, picnics. Right. And again, Another plosive here. And the plosives, you know, Lydia recorded this herself. So she just got a little too close to the uh, pop filter. Oh, picnics. Oh, picnics in the park. Beautiful. Oh, picnics in the park. I like all of that. So I'm just going to cut up into that part. Add a little fade. Picnics in the park. You're the one that I... Pr You're the one... Got a little breath right there, but I think it sounds natural. So I'm just going to fade it in to where it's a little bit softer. And let's hear it with the music. You're the one that I... Nope. I think that we need to actually get rid of that now that I hear it in context with the music. So let's hear it again. You're the one Perfect. that I prayed for. And again, we have another little, uh, little clip with a... Uh, at the... All right, so I just want to add a fade there and then adjust that fade slope. I prayed for perfect. That I prayed for. So let's hear what we have so far. It's the kinds of love I've been longing for. Send shivers down my spine. Makes me wonder why it took so long to get here. Mm -hmm. Sexy dates. 
In fancy places, oh, picnics in the park. So much cleaner. And, you know, I honestly, like, I don't, it wouldn't take me that much longer knowing the shortcuts that I know, being able to navigate through this track. Now, other issues that we see here is like there are just some inconsistencies um, in the levels. So certain stuff that you probably want to do as you are editing, I'm going to zoom out here, is before I, I start to worry about like heavy compression and stuff, like this track ain't too bad. There are a few spikes and stuff like that, but I'll just chunk that up to her dynamics. But like looking at some of these background vocal tracks, let's just hear these. I'm going to pan them hard left and right so we can get the feeling. I see this. Uh, they're stereo. Right. So we can see that those sections were uh -oh, were recorded uh, drastically lower than whatever else is on that track. And honestly, I think that the whole track probably needs to uh, come up and level. But I'm just going to first start off with these sections that are really low. And make the adjustment to just turn those up some so that as I'm mixing, since the they're on the same track, they should be roughly about the same level. That way I won't have to worry about my compressors working in different states or doing too much automation. And this is going to take us to our next and third uh, thing that we want to do in an editing session, especially with like background vocals. We want to uh, make sure everything is time aligned as close as possible. So let me move this background vocal down to this track and focus on these. So I'm going to bring in this secondary uh, lead vocal track where the main part is. Oh. Now, of course, there are some plugins like Vocaline that could do this automatically. But again, me, I like to have a human feel. And as long as there aren't too many uh, backing tracks, um, I, I don't feel like it's necessary 100% of the time. So let's just uh, mute the music for a second. Be me, treat me, love me. And, and honestly, those aren't too, too far apart. <laughs> Um, and, and I might not even edit those up in um, a traditional setting, but just to show y'all, I will go ahead and separate this clip. This is the one that seems like it's a little bit late. We can see the starting of this um, waveform in comparison with the lead vocal. So I'm going to separate it and I'm going to just nudge it on up manually and visually. Be me, treat me. Much, much better. Be me, be me. Right. And then also we can hear like, again, since I'm so long, so I can hear that the pitch me. is a little, little off on that me. one. All right. You hear that? Be me. Treat me. Okay. And let's hear this. Treat me. Treat me. Now, sometimes you want to keep the natural feeling of time and differences. That's what's going to really help to create that stacked feeling. Um, these clips can be moved though so let's just go ahead and, and up uh scoot them up a little bit treat me oh uh, yeah see sounding so much cleaner sounding like a professional record be me treat me love me and if you need to you can always zoom your waveforms in love me and i think the loves are pretty good but the me's and you can even see the timing on those me's especially this this one here so i'm going to just move this one separate it and by the way i'm just simply dropping my insertion point and i'm hitting the letter b on my keyboard to separate the clip again that's another one of those one key shortcuts and since i'm in slip mode i can easily move that on up and of course, I'm going to add a fade every time I do an edit. I should, of course, have done that here. I'm setting a horrible example for y'all um, as I'm doing this because I'm trying to think about uh, the tutorial and, and actually mixing. But yes, you definitely want to set a fade anytime you do an edit and on every single clip like we were doing. Me, 
And of course, all of these, all of these breaths can just go and fades. Okay. Batch fade in that time. So, and this is a perfect example of when I would use a batch fade is when I have multiple clips doing the exact same thing that I've edited at the same time. So I can just make a selection over those and then hit command F because all of these fades can be the same. And then I'll just adjust the fade slope and then apply that fade. Treat me, love. And you know what? I want to adjust that fade a little bit harder. Treat me, love. And matter of fact, I just need to get it a little bit closer. Treat me, love me. Treat me, love me. Yes. Fate. Hear this with the music. Be me, treat me, love me. Right. And so this, I probably, since it's, it's be me, treat me, love me. All right. So what I'm going to do here is actually on the background vocals, I'll get rid of. On the background vocals, I'm going to get rid of the breaths. But the lead vocal, I think I'm going to leave it so that there's some natural but what i don't want to have is stacks with a bunch of breaths all happening at different times so if you're going to do that i would just prefer that you keep the breath on the lead if you're going to leave a breath keep the breath from the lead and then edit the rest of the breaths out Treat me, love me. Perfect. Be me, treat me, love me. And again, this track here, I'm going to separate this clip on the lead even and add a nice healthy fade on the end of that, uh, that word because she adds a little extra breathiness on the end. Be me, be me, treat me. Right. And some of these just got to get trimmed. You're not always going to get it perfect the first time. So um, that's why listening is so critical. Be me, treat, be me, treat me, love me. Ah, yeah, so much better. Make sure that you be careful whenever you are adjusting the timing right some of the timing that artists use when they are performing is very specific and very intentional so if you're not sure about whether you should be changing the timing make sure you consult with the producer or the artist before you make any changes hopefully this editing video has helped you to get cleaner mixes you really can underestimate how drastically your mix can change and start to sound more polished and more professional just by putting the time in to properly edit up the tracks and clean them up. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavyproaudio.com. Thanks for watching this video. Be dope, man.